This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. Try Dashlane Premium free for 30 days at dashlane.com slash infographics. And never forget another password and keep all your online accounts secure. It's one of the enduring mysteries of modern times, a riddle for the digital age. Who created the cryptocurrency known as Bitcoin? After its release in 2009, hardly anyone had heard of it. And when people started to hear the word Bitcoin, not many of them gave it a second's thought. Now, millions of folks use it and some have made a virtual fortune from selling it. We guess you've all heard the story of Laszlo Hanyetz who paid for two large Papa John's pizzas for 10,000 bitcoins in 2010, worth then a measly 30 bucks. If that guy would have held on to them, he could have made at one point as much as 100 million dollars. Recently he said, I don't regret it. I think that it's great that I got to be part of the early history of Bitcoin. The question is though, who did this history begin with? The story starts with a name and that name is Satoshi Nakamoto. Behind this name is a shadow, a ghost, it's a name that conjures up conspiracy theorists, that peaks and stirs our imaginations. He's real and not real, a kind of Kaiser Sosa of the digital era. We say this because he's the guy, the specter that put his name on the domain bitcoin.org on the 18th of August 2008. He's also the person that following that wrote a paper called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. He hung around for a couple more years and then, like that, he was gone. What we want to know is where is he now and who are we really talking about? Because the experts out there are fairly certain there is no person called Satoshi Nakamoto who created Bitcoin. In 2012, this extremely wise guy claiming to be Mr. Nakamoto said he was a 37-year-old dude from Japan. Back then, before he went missing, no one really believed that and these days, no one believes it. In the early days, people knew something was amiss when they saw that he wrote in impeccable English. But so what? Lots of Japanese people do. But then he used British phrases and British spelling when he wrote. Lots of things just didn't seem right. The famous and sometimes infamous tech entrepreneur John McAfee says he actually knows who the Bitcoin wizard is, but he's not telling. Still, McAfee has been known to say some outlandish things at times. Let's now look at some possibilities regarding who Nakamoto is. Back when not many people really cared about Bitcoin, some people did do a bit of investigating about this so-called Japanese creator. One of the first people to try and unmask Nakamoto was an internet security researcher called Dan Kaminsky. He told the New Yorker in 2011 he knew one thing for sure and that was he's a world-class programmer with a deep understanding of the C++ programming language. He understands economics, cryptography, and peer-to-peer -peer networking. He also said if this guy isn't actually a team of guys, then he's an absolute genius. Many others have said no way could one man alone have done this unless, unless he was out of this world intelligent. So we're looking for a genius. There can't be too many of those hiding out underground, surely. They tend to float to the top of society or at least cause ripples in the rivers of the underground. That investigator went looking for other cryptography experts because hey, it's very likely that the best knew the best, but he came up with nothing in the end. Was it the Finnish tech researcher and programmer Vili Leronverta? That's highly unlikely. His name was put forward but he didn't even know cryptography that well and surely he would have given up his day job at the university where he worked. What about Gavin Andreessen? He was the guy that took over Bitcoin after Nakamoto did his disappearing act but no, no one really believes that. What's interesting though is that Andreessen once said that he did know who Nakamoto was and he gave the name Craig Wright. But that's only because Wright, an Australian computer scientist, said he was. He was investigated and a lot about his life and work and activity suggested that either he was the creator or he was really good at lying. It's also said that he wrote some messages using cryptographic keys that were inextricably linked to blocks of Bitcoin created by the great Nakamoto. Wright even registered a US copyright for Bitcoin 0.1 in April 2019. But the US Copyright Office said it doesn't look into what it said was a provable connection between the claimant and the pseudonym's author. In other words, that copyright doesn't mean much. Wright's claim though was supported by others. There were further investigations with Wired once writing that Wright either invented Bitcoin or is a brilliant hoaxer who very badly wants us to believe he did. He's even threatened to sue people for libel who say it wasn't him, so he takes the matter very seriously. Then in 2019 he came out with a bombshell, but something not totally unexpected. He said Nakamoto wasn't just him, but he led a team of people. He said he was kind of the principal actor. The other people involved, he said, were Dave Kleinman and Hal Finney. 
So let's have a look at these guys. Kleinman, called an avid cryptographer, isn't alive any longer. He passed away in 2013. He was on the mailing list of this Nakamoto character, and he was skilled in the arts of building encryption-focused software. The problem is, according to the experts, the only evidence he was part of this team Wright talks about is Wright's word. Wright has been accused of making things up by some investigators, and listen to what was written about Kleinman after he died in apparent poverty. His body was found decomposing and surrounded by empty alcohol bottles and a loaded handgun. A bullet hole was found in his mattress, though no spent shell casings were found on the scene. The story now turns into a darker shade of grey. It gets weirder, though, because allegedly Kleinman died with a massive stack of Bitcoin. People have even said that it was Kleinman and Kleinman alone that was Nakamoto. From what we can see, though, is that his brother hasn't released his hard drives and they could hold some valuable information. Should we trust what this man Wright says? That's the question. This is what Bitcoin.com says about Wright. There is some evidence that Wright was lurking in the shadows not long after Bitcoin got off the ground. But all that proves is that fake Toshi is a chancer who's built a career out of riding in the slipstream of brighter stars. That said, he was working on Bitcoin from the beginning, or something like it. In an interview, his wife said he was working on something he called digital money, and that was way back. He worked on that with his friend, and his friend was Dave Kleinman. There are many things pointing to Wright telling the truth, such as a hacked PDF of a legal contract between Wright and Kleinman. That contract is for a trust in the Seychelles, and that trust would hold a fortune of Bitcoin similar to that which Nakamoto had. Still, investigators have said that this is bogus and neither Wright nor Nakamoto had the amount of Bitcoin in that contract. The researcher we just mentioned called Dan Kaminsky has looked into the claim and he concluded that it's international scammery. If this is confusing to you, don't worry, because the whole story of who Nakamoto is or was has been causing migraines and sometimes vicious debates for a long time. Now let's have a look at this man called Hal Finney. Of all the people thought to be Nakamoto, he is certainly a big suspect. This guy Finney was said to be a pre-Bitcoin cryptographic pioneer. He was a genius and if he wasn't Nakamoto, then the two could be said to be endowed with similar intellectual properties. As Bitcoin.com writes, Hal Finney epitomizes Bitcoin more than any other person. Writing analysis experts have also said that he and Nakamoto have very similar handwriting. But they said that about Andreessen too. Some people have suggested that he was a ghostwriter for Nakamoto, not that he was the man himself. But Finney denied being Nakamoto and allowed investigators into his house. Those investigators concluded that he was indeed telling the truth. But there's no doubt Finney and Nakamoto were in contact via email a lot. Others have said that if Nakamoto was trying to hide, why would Finney have been openly emailing himself? That's if he was Nakamoto in disguise. It makes no sense because obviously the trail leads back to Finney. Or was it some crazy double bluff? By the way, Finney was the first guy ever to receive a Bitcoin transaction from Nakamoto. Unfortunately, Finney got ALS, known as Lou Gehrig's disease, and became paralyzed and then died in 2014. Rest in peace, the second genius of this tale. So if these three guys weren't all together Nakamoto, then they were all there at the beginning of Bitcoin. But the story doesn't stop there, it gets even stranger. That's because a man living down the street from Finney was called Dorian Nakamoto. Hmm, that's some coincidence, eh? He was also a computer whiz and like most of those that embrace cryptocurrencies, a libertarian. He was actually investigated by a Newsweek journalist in 2014 and get this, he told the journalist, I am no longer involved in that and I cannot discuss it. It's been turned over to other people. They're in charge of it now. I no longer have any connection. So is that confirmation? It gets weird again because Dorian then backtracked, saying he misunderstood the question and thought the journalist was talking about his military work, which was classified. Then something strange happened. The real Nakamoto's P2P Foundation account came alive for the first time in five years and a message read, I am not Dorian Nakamoto. Some people, though, think it was hacked. Others have said that while he might have been a systems engineer on classified government defense projects and also a computer engineer for technology and financial information services companies, he certainly didn't have the brains to be the real Nakamoto, not unless he hid his super intelligence very well. Another name that pops up a lot is Nick Szabo. That's because he certainly did have the brain power to create something like Bitcoin, and the reason we say that is because he published a paper on something called BitGold, which was a theoretical decentralized digital currency. It didn't ever really get off the ground, but it was certainly a precursor to Bitcoin. 
He envisioned and laid out a plan like Bitcoin before Bitcoin came out. He was a certified genius, no doubt, and people investigating the riddle have said it was him, only because he's the only one who would know how to create something like Bitcoin. One investigator wrote, I've concluded that there's only one person in the whole world that has the sheer breadth but also the specificity of knowledge, and it's this chap. There's also evidence on one of his blogs that he wrote about intending to invent a real-life version of his bit gold. But Sabo vehemently denies he is Nakamoto, even though he has at least admitted that if anyone in the world that he knew of could have created Bitcoin and wanted to create Bitcoin, it would have been him, or Finney, or a guy called We Die. The latter isn't in the list of usual suspects. As for Sabo, he certainly dreamed of something like Bitcoin and has said so in interviews, so he only has the greatest respect for Nakamoto. Still, there's not enough evidence pointing to him actually being Nakamoto. In one interview he said of his bit gold, Satoshi came along and improved a number of aspects of it, made it even more trust minimized, and actually wrote software, so that brings the whole story to where we are today. He claims he has no idea who Satoshi is though. Others have been accused of being the ghost of Bitcoin, including Elon Musk, or a Japanese mathematician called Shinichi Mochizuki, or even the creator of the dark web Silk Road, Ross Ulbricht. But the latter is highly unlikely and the other two have denied it. A denial doesn't mean they didn't do it, but there's no convincing evidence it was them. You'll also find conspiracy theories pointing to the US government creating Bitcoin as a black ops thing, perhaps to send untraceable funds for its various operations, but there's no proof of that either. Right now, the man known as Satoshi Nakamoto is still a missing person, the Kaiser Souza of cryptocurrency. Our story has all the suspects lined up against the wall, but perhaps there really is another Satoshi Nakamoto and that he's not a myth, but one man, a genius of a man, who has managed to keep his identity completely hidden. Because you know what they say, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Regardless of who's behind Bitcoin, it's unfortunately been used for some nefarious purposes like being used as payment for ransomware after hacks. And it's not just big businesses and governments that are targeted, but regular people like you and me. That's why we here at the Infographics Show have been keeping ourselves protected using Dashlane. Dashlane is the one and only tool you need to not just keep your personal info and digital accounts safe and secure, but their dark web monitoring services will immediately notify you if it finds any of your personal information for sale on an online marketplace, so you can take steps to protect yourself right away. Don't be like millions of victims every day. Get Dashlane and keep your digital life secure right now. Head on over to www.dashlane.com infographics for a free 30-day trial. And if you use the coupon code infographics, you can get 10% off a premium subscription today.